Welcome. Welcome, people. Welcome to the Fluffy's Exhibition. Welcome to SCP 940s. Okay. Let me just. Oh, yeah. Prepare. I'm not sure if you can hear my laundry machine going absolutely crazy in the background. Um, I have to eventually go real quick and take some clothes out. Probably like in like 15, 20 minutes. Um, yeah, we'll see how that we'll see how that goes. Uh, all right. Let me just prepare everything. There we go, Henry. You know, Henry, I do realize that you're always a bit so like behind me. Here, that might be a better position for you. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Look at that, Henry. Look at you. In a good puss. In a good position. Okay. Let me just. There we go. <clears throat> it, I'm pretty sure this should have worked, right? Maybe. I have no idea, actually. Well, I'm going online now. We're in the 940s. As I said, 941, which is called Sick of Motion, is done by the same person who has done Ancient Playing Cards. So I will keep track of that. Um, but for now, we have 941, Arane Marionettes. Okay, so the marionettes of the puppets, but I don't know what our name means. Let's see if there's an actual meaning behind this word, or if there's just like a a word that the person who wrote for the foundation came up with. Ah, spider. Okay, so it's a speeder. So spider puppets. Hmm. Makes me wonder if that means like mm, instead of the spider being a puppet, what if they are the puppeteers? Makes some kind of sense, right? They have to, they have to waves, they have to wave fluid, they just and then make you become their slave. I don't know, maybe something along those lines. Ew. <laughs> Keto, okay, we starting off with a strong one apparently. We starting off with Keto with a very good rating. Well, let's let's begin. All known samples of SCP-940 larva are currently in containment. Systematic purging of SCP-940 adult samples from civilians is currently, as of blank blank blank, being spearheaded by a combination of Area 14 research personnel and Mobile Task Force Omicron 7 Orkin. Samples of foundation strengthened blank 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 C for documentation regarding Asian blue are in the process of being added to commercially available insecticides which is which is expected to prevent any more wild strains of SB940 from arising. Oh you're arising, are you? <laughs> uh, all SB940 infectees are to be treated as class 4 biohazards and are to be contained and transported under heavy sedation to area 14 or otherwise terminated. Deceased bodies infected with any SCP-940 strain, regardless of development stage, are to be incinerated. Well, fuck. <laughs> so this is an SCP-940 parasite in the second stage of infection. So, but this is a parasite. So, okay, now I see this picture and I see the parasite and I read infection. It must be, instead of the spiders like doing this, and controlling you, they infect you, and you become a human host or mech basically for them. And they control you, and you just walk around like the spider's like, How the fuck do people walk with two legs? <laughs> I have eight legs. How, how do you do this? <laughs> Maybe. Again, I'm just speculating, but it might just be it. SV940 is a parasitoid organism with some superficial similarities to troclopod. Troclopidic members of the class Arachnita. Adult specimens are highly agile and possess leg spans from 4 to 7 meters. Due to the difficulty in separating SCP 940 from their hosts, see below, average weight and body size are 
mood considerations. Each of the eight translu translucent legs is dotted regularly with six types of specialized sensory organs, IR sensitive pit organs, ampullae of Lorenzini, compound and non-compound eyes sensitive to UV, and two additional organs of indeterminate function and an enlarged tarsal claws possessing uh, scopulae and settlers common among species of hunting sp uh, spiders and allowing them to climb sheer vertical surfaces with ease. So, yeah, they basically like spiders. SB94 all possess a radial nerve net similar to Asteroidea, or the common starfish. Okay, and no central nervous system. The possibility that SCP-940 rely on their host's brain power for processing of external stimuli cannot be ruled out at this time. Y'all crazy. Y'all crazy. Infection occurs following exposure to, to body fluids containing SCP-940 eggs and larva. The life cycle of SCP-940 from initial infection to maturity is as follows. Okay, here we go. Stage 1, symptom progression. Infection occurs with exposure to bodily fluids contaminated with scp 940 x and or lava. While larvae at this point are too small to be seen by the human eye, microscopic testing has revealed eggs are typically no larger than 3 to 5 microns in diameter. scp 940 larvae, the only stage of its life cycle with many organ systems necessary for survival prior to integration with a host possesses leg span from 7 to 70 microns. And here we have a picture. Infect the culture of human blood containing parasite eggs. I'm looking down at the picture far, far below, and I'm kind of worried what that's supposed to be because it kind of looks very, very nasty. Uh, number two, the first SCP 940 larva to hatch will begin cannibalizing any unhatched eggs and each other in order to ensure only one larva develops in, into an adult within a given host. <laughs> this host is mine! <laughs> I found it first! <laughs> it's like, okay, calm down. You don't have to be like this. <laughs> it doesn't have to be like this! <laughs> Um, hosts will often complain of abdominal chest pains at this stage. Note cases of, uh, cases of as many as five larva reaching maturity within a single host through rare, though rare to the comp competitiveness between larva for host and the enormous strain placed upon the host's body have been documented. See incident 1, subject 4. Ultrasound of hatched, parasite, of hatched parasites in carotid, 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 carotid? Artery, lava not, uh, not in circles, noted in circles. Yeah, so you can see it, like very like the outline right here. So what is this disgusting? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Number three, the remaining SCP-940 larva migrates through the chest cavity, typically attaching to a major artery. The heart or spinal cord is not the heart, please. I need it to beat and survive. I need it to live. Position with its legs or oriented towards the host's back. Internal organ systems of the larva begin atrophying. Death caused by severe heart uh, infestation. Yeah, you can see them legs popping out. <sighs> the subject died of a stroke caused by breakdown of internal body consistent with transition to stage four. <coughs> the carapace of SCP-940 larva body breaks down. Legs remain intact. The circulatory system of the larva conjoins with, the, with that of a host, of the host, as does its nervous system, though to a lesser extent. The larva begins producing a number of enzymes which cause the host's body to increase production of a number of hormones, including human growth hormone. Earlier, abdominal and chest pain subsides. The host experiences an increase in appetite and general listlessness. Somebody was here just for a moment, and I was happy that somebody joined, but then I guess they saw this. <laughs> and we're like, mm -mm, I ain't staying here. <laughs> MR MRA image of MRA. No, MR, MRA image, Im, uh, image of a parasite bonded to abdominal aorta. What the fuck is even... Oh, God. 
Stage 5, approximately 3 weeks after initial infection, SB940 begins to alter serotonin and dopamine levels in the host's brain, causing hosts to experience feeling of happiness and well-being. The legs of the larva that now supply blood and nutrients by the host's circulatory system begin to penetrate the skin of the host's back. Hosts typically do not report any discomfort or alarm at this and rarely seek treatment. And as you can see, the leg of paths are beginning to penetrate back. <laughs> You, I, I love how you can actually tell that it's actually f that it's photoshopped in. <laughs> like if you look really carefully, you can definitely tell it's photoshopped in. But whoever got this little injury, ugh, God. <laughs> Hopefully they, they, that's not wasn't anything serious. Stage six, approximately five weeks after initial infection, SCP-940 reaches full size and maturity. Hosts are sec uh, secretive about the condition. A a form of communication is believed to occur between SB940 and its host. For example, hosts have displayed a vague awareness of things occurring behind them. So they have like suddenly like the sense of <laughs> they get spider sense. <laughs> <laughs> My spider sense is tingling. <laughs> I should get that as a sound. My spider sense is starting to tingle. <laughs> um. Um, SB940 specimens often retract their legs, folding them flat against the host's back, allowing them to be concealed with relative ease by clothing. Additionally, SB940 triggers an increase in the levels of testosterone in the host's body, leading to increased lib lib libido. Infection of new hosts is facilitated through contact with bodily fluids contaminated with SCP-940 eggs. This is usually accomplished via coitus with an, um, with an infected ha. Oh. Oh. Do you want to tell me this spider decided to mix its sperm with my sperm? That is just straight up nasty. <laughs> it's disgusting. I love it. But it's just, uh, it's just gross. Infected semen sampling recovered from exposure during incident 2. Eggs are generally invisible in female vaginal fluids. See report uh, 1, 4, and 5 for more information. Se uh, stage seven. No oh god, I'm about to throw up. <laughs> this is this is, like, this is this is a big ass. Oof. Yeah, this is a big oof. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Wait, hold on. Let me actually make this louder, but the low fi bit quieter. That way, Oof. that is a bit easier to hear. Oh god, okay. <laughs> All infected individuals that have survived six weeks of infection are considered to be in stage 7. Stage 7 infectees report the loss of a sense of individuality, gradual clouding of the eyes, leading to loss of eyesight, and culminating in near total blindness and bouts of catatonia and catalepsy. Death is typically due to aneurysm caused by skyrocketing, skyrocketing blood pressure, heart or kidney failure, or exsanguination. Infect, uh, exsanguination. Infected at this stage can be identified by the strange choking sound they issue as they attempt to draw in more oxygen than, than it is possible. When the host biologically dies, SB940 will continue to animate the corpse by means of its limbs, entering a berserk state. In this state, SB940 will attempt to reproduce and infect with no regard for concealment, generally inflicting physical violence and blood transmission to do so. This state can last from one of to three days before SB940 expires. Image from breakout at area 14 containment. Nope, image, image. Oops, no, it's already was here. Image. Redacted by. Oh, 0512. <laughs> oh God, now, no, you don't have to do, please stop. Uh, Total off, yes, that, that needs to stop. Maybe not all of them, because some of them are important, but, oh well. Um, at, at random, stage 6 and above, uh, uh, and above adult SV940 samples, when not attempting to conceal their identities, are extremely agile and capable predators. Through the use of their powerful limbs and multiple sensory organs, they are highly adept at evading capture. Field agents are to be highly cautious and equipped with MOPP4 gear at all times to prevent infection and foundation issue nerve gas grenades from, for suppression purposes. Henry, this is, uh, my food might come back up, Henry, I don't know. 
<coughs> incident one on blank 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 assistant researcher s blank failed to return a live sample of scp 940 log to cold storage instead of allowing the sample to remain unattended in the lab for approximately 45 minutes while in lunch while on lunch break the resulting breach of containment resulted in seven sp940 infections among amongst research and security personnel and another five in d-class personnel the affected wing of area 14 was isolated for decontamination and infected plantation personnel administered administered in intravenous antiparasitic compound all received treatment within six hours of infection made full recovery infected um D-class personnel were isolated for observation so as to establish a progression of SB940 infection and determine for how long it remains treatable. And here we have a picture saying SB940 in utero recovered from subject D5 on blank. Ugh. Ugh. Observation of subject uh, D1, 2, and 3 from the base of the infection given progression above. Subject D4 is the only infectee that did not follow the above reported progression due to multiple larvae reaching maturity. D4 was terminated three weeks into, into the process when the accelerated symptoms resulted in her progression to stage 7, completely bypassing stage five, stages 5 and 6. Subject D5 was initially believed to be uninfected, displaying no symptoms of SV940 infection after three weeks. A full examination found D5 to be pregnant. That's... Oh, God. The unborn fetus was infected. The fetus D6 was allowed to mature. D5 was kept unaware of, the, of, his, of its condition. Both expired when the legs of SV940 penetrated D5 uterus. D6 is preserved, kept in cryogenic storage at arm biocontainment area 14 for study. Oh god, <laughs> what a way to start this SCP reading today. God... Mm. Mm. Gotta say... Fuck. <laughs> mm. My stomach is like, that burger's gonna bound to fly back out of you, dude. <laughs> you, better be, you best be ready. Because it's going to come out with some viscosity, some ferocity, and some speed. <laughs> sick of motion. Yeah, I'm sick of I'm sick right now. <laughs> I read something nasty. Sick of motion. Well, you, know how, you know how you can cause sickness sometimes? Just because like the motion doesn't really sit well with your body. What if it's just casual motion? What, what in the moment you just do this? And your whole body's just like <laughs> about to fucking faint because it's just it makes you feel everything. Everything bad. It makes you feel everything bad. Maybe. Are we in back to the future? What the <laughs> What the hell is this? Uh, Euclid. All objects afflicted by SCP-941 are kept in a secure garage within the model division of Site-77, disassembled to individual components when not being tested. A science team supervised by Assistant Director of Medicine, Vale, has been assigned to investigate SCP-941 from an epi epi epidemiological and behavioral behavioralist perspective with special attention paid to cases indicating potentially novel strains or action taken by SB941 infected vehicles. Any research indicating SB941 being capable of crossing over to diesel vehicles is to be treated as a class 5 biohazard th uh, threat, and any potential vectors for cross-infection are to be destroyed immediately. Mobile Task Force Psi 7 Home Improvement has been assigned to assess and secure structures identified, identified as infection vectors. Because SB941 was already widespread in certain regions at the time of its initial discovery, it currently continued to exist in small numbers in the general vehicle population. As such, containment field agents are focused on suppression of information regarding SB941 through previously utilized disinformation techniques. Foundation-owned vehicles are to be, whenever possible, diesel-fueled or electrically powered. SB1894 has been demonstrated as being immune to SB941, a fact discovered during accidental contact as such it has been earmarked as a potential fail-safe vehicle in the event of a mass containment failure resulting in widespread infection. And here we have a lot of recovered vehicles infected by SB941 seized during initial containment operation. I wonder... 
if this is a picture from the Back to the Future um, <laughs> film set. A lot of DeLoreans. A lot of DeLoreans. And I'm trying to look. Like, there's a lot. Uh, there's a couple of cars in the back that seem also more or less like movie cars. Not all of them. But some of them. Description. SB941 is a viral phenomenon infect affecting gasoline-powered automobiles designed for human transportation. Infected machines will indicate a variety of malfunctions typically manifesting over a period of three or, four, or to five days, then fading over a similar time frame. SB941 afflicted devices are permanently contagious following infection even after the symptomatic phase ends. Although no actual mechanical errors have been known to manifest in, in SCP-941 infected machines, drivers will report hearing unusual noises and changes in the feel of the vehicle during normal operations. <laughs> like, what is the car called again? Fuck. Uh, from uh, Stephen King. Uh, car. It's, uh, it's not called Carrie. It's, that's the placket girl. Um, it's called, it's called, it's called Christine. Yes. No, remember having Christine, the guy that's like, this car, I can feel some, it changes me, makes me feel good. <laughs> I need this car. I love this car. <laughs> um... In addition, when affected machines are tested in harsh terrain, climates are used for more than three hours. Then, wait, climates are used for more than three hours. They may cease operation entirely without apparent cause. Okay. Electronic systems such as a GPS or a screen-based control console in newer vehicles may exhibit unusual graphical and auditory glitches. Navigational equipment will attempt to steer the user away from highly trafficked areas or the aforementioned extreme terrain and change the user's destination to car washes, high-end parking garages, or auto, de auto dealership. Uh, because that's where more cars are. Come on, lead me to more cars. I want to meet more people like me. More vehicles like me. Won't you do it for me? <laughs> SB941 spreads to other automobiles through direct contact and proximity. Foundation research has shown that, that automobiles kept in adjacent space to SB941 positive machines may begin displaying symptoms which fade over time or occur intermi intermittently. This phenomenon has only been shown in controlled experiments and has not been observed in the wild. Biological matter is currently believed to be a factor in the expression of SB941's effect, effect as testing of vehicles directly by non-human elements such as automaton crash test dummies and SB1872 has shown SB941 accurate only if direct or indirectly control directly or indirectly controlled by human drivers. Although the only foundation known means of detecting SB941 infection is the ability of one vehicle to infect others, it is known that there must be another means of detection. SCP-1727 will refuse service to any SB941 afflicted vehicle giving a message reading, no brakes, fakes, or phonies. <clears throat> History. SB941 was first observed by quality control engineers employed by the DeLorean Motor Company. Uh huh. That's why. <laughs> During initial engineering of the gold wing doors used in the in the product, notes from this period mentioned a distinctive semi-organic compound secreted, secreted during manufacturing, as well as a frequent breakdowns and failures on the assembly line. Foundation assets first became a, uh, aware of SB941 after collated traffic reports. Collated? Collated? Traffic reports involving the DMC vehicle were flagged as being potentially anomalous in nature. Follow-up operations confirmed the suspicion all known infected vehicles were impounded by Foundation agents through the guise of multiple recalls. Uh, disinformation campaigns against the DMC centered around ties to organized crime in combination with the recall efforts resulted in the shuttering of the corporation. As of the present date, uh, no other production line has been observed to carry SB941 and the initial infection source is unknown. Addendum. During testing on the 1st 27th, 2019, Assistant Director Vale was conducting an experiment in SB941's ability to spread through non-contact means. During inspection of the 3rd 
party GPS system, a control vehicle initiated direct, direct communications. This effect has not been found in any subsequent experiment, nor had it manifested in previous ones. Following this interview, the vehicle was retested and showed no trace of SB941 infection. American-made sedan, uh, in, identified as uh, 941-V or 5, and interviewer is Assistant Director Calais uh, Amity Vale. Interview occurred during observation of the vehicle's interior. The standard manner of controlled experiments that have been on a daily basis for several weeks prior to this event. 941-V spoke with a feminine voice throughout the interview. Mm, test time, test time, engines fired up. Test time, test time. Dum, mm, 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 mm. Voice navigation activated. Turn left onto sta stationary street. D uh, deactivate navigation. Sorry, didn't quite get that. Make a U-turn and park on the exit ramp. Calm down, darn thing. I haven't even turned over the engine. How did you turn this dang thing, darn dang thing off? Plug in the cigarette lighter. No, no. Hmm. Do never cause. Do newer cars even have those anymore? I hope not. Focus, focus. Uh, deactivate navigation, please. Sorry, that isn't going to work. There are several walk-in clinics and urgent care facilities nearby. Which would like? Which would you like to navigate to? Hmm. If you're feeling symptoms, tell me about them. Uh, starting point in. Hurt, Virginia. Maintains required. Please try again tomorrow. Anything more specific? I'd love to give a more specific diagnosis. We're testing for a virus that spreads among autos, such as yourself. But I'm quite certain you haven't been infected. Navigation can begin tomorrow. Please confirm your coordinates to 10 Sleep, Wyoming. Turns engine off. Um, let's see here. Look, I'm not hearing any rattling or screeching. You're fine. If you got anything, I'm sure it's going to be mild. Can you really understand me? If you're not one of those sick mobiles, there's a lot we could talk about. At the live, remain in your lane to turn into the parking lot. I think I get what you're telling me here. I don't like working when there's a bug in me either. I level with you. If you're not going to talk to us, there are people out there who will pick you apart trying to figure out what's happening here. At the following intersection, make a sharp left onto Shades of Death Road. That doesn't sound like a real road. I hope you're not trying to be threatening. An unexpected error occurred. Please see manufacturer about resting and refurbishing your machine. Further activity may result in injury due to exhaust and unintelligible. Unintelligible vocal robbing engine dies. Uh, 15 second pause. Attempt to start engine. Other way, I don't need to use my voice mod for that one. Shucks, any chance I could convince you to get on with our program here? There's an awful lot we could learn if you got something new here. We could treat you well. Thank you. Goodbye. I can smell a faker before they got uh, they get the examination room. Once this one returned to the testing pool for further testing as soon as it is fully inspected, the deputy director of medicine Vale. Closing statement, follow-up testing has been authorized by director Gillespie 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 Ugh Something. <laughs> Just, just bring me to some more cars, please. What else is there to, un to what else is there to understand? Well, just talk to us, and we might be able to help you. Go park, please. No. <laughs> Blood candy. <clears throat> Honestly, I can only think of like some like uh, some kids. Um. Going for Halloween, they get some candy. It's like like the fireball red, they, but it's like squishy. They bite into it, it explodes. And you how like how gushers or some other candy has like have, have, have like fillings, and they're like, oh yeah, that's the. Why does it taste like blood? <laughs> why does why do I smell? Why do I taste metal? <laughs> you know what I mean, like that. So. That's what the first thing came to my mind when I heard, when I read blood candy. Just a bunch of kids at Halloween just finding out that what well, they're eating is actually just blood, and you know, doesn't really go well. Uh, level two restricted. Please rating. Containment class safe. Disruption class dark. Risk class notice. I have no idea what all these means, by the way. Like, they're so rare. I think I had in those 
940 SCPs that I read, I think I had this type of setup like only like four to five times, maybe even more, maybe more. But yeah, they're not that common. <laughs> Special containment procedures. SCP-942-2 is to be stored in a locked safe deposit box at site blanks low risk object storage. Access is to be limited to experiment experiments with prior written permission from the current SCP-942 lead researcher. There's a footnote currently, Dr. Iron Blunt. Any personnel affected by Dash 1 must remain within Foundation controlled facilities at all times. Contact with civilians, personnel without level 2 clearance on SCP-942 or other anomalous items is strictly forbidden for affected personnel. Affected personnel are to be given a higher priority for psychological screening and aid. Any civilians aff affected by SCP-942-1 are to be recruited or terminated with suitable cover stories on a case-by-case -case basis as no cure is available at this time. If additional instances of Dash 2 are encountered, the option is to be retrieved as soon as possible and the surrounding area checked for affected subjects. Destruction of additional instances of Dash 2 is authorized if retrieval proves infeasible. Description Dash 1 are colored gumballs or standard. Hey, I wasn't wrong with candy. Well, duh. <laughs> it does, it, the title is Blood Candy, so of course I'm not wrong with candy. Um, of standard 2.53 centimeter size. From the moment an instance of Dash 1 is ingested, the consumed bodily fluids will take on the appearance of blood upon leaving the subject's body. Okay, that must be. I'm sorry. <laughs> Can you imagine how scary that would be? Sp like spit, piss, sperm, anything that comes out of your body, snot. <laughs> Just, just pure red. <laughs> the fluids will co uh, coagulate like normal blood and are indistinguishable from blood by sight, smell, or touch. However, observation by means other than aforementioned, such as chemical analysis or infrared uh, spectroscopy, will indicate that the original uh, will indicate the original substance. Other than coagulation, the fluids show no anomalous reaction or chemical processes. The subject's actual blood and the properties of body fluids will, while, remain, while remaining inside the body, appear to be unaffected. The nasal cavity on the surface of the eye are not entirely free from the effect, resulting in the appearance of bloodshot eyes, tears of blood, and a constant low-intensity nosebleed in the affected subject. Regions prone to sweating, such as t uh, toes or armpits, will be covered near perpetually in crust of dry blood, and affected subjects have reported considerable discomfort during urination. I was about to ask, like, that must be uncomfortable to take a piss in if it just crusts up. Oh, oh, oh. Mm. <laughs> no, no. Uh, subjects have been known to suffer panic attacks after exposure. <laughs> Fucking naturally. <laughs> you piss out blood and sweat blood and cry blood and your eyes are suddenly bloodshot of course I would be I would be panicking too everybody would be there's no normal there's no person that would be like look at them like oh this seems normal <laughs> it's believed that these are mundane reactions to the effect of this object and not anomalous caused by the object itself you don't say <laughs> you don't say as I said before I don't think there's a single person that would look at that and be like huh it's been a while since I pissed blood <laughs> This includes panic attacks where subjects will attempt to remove the excess blood in some cases leading to severe bodily harm and dehydration. Oh boy. Obsession, obsession with personal hygiene and hypochondria are also to be considered mundane reactions. Dash 2 is a small bubble gum dispenser. Okay, my clothes is now ready. For home use of a model produced by... Redacted. Um, by the way, I'm just going to move it a little bit closer like this so I can actually hit that button. Dash 2 is unremarkable in all aspects other than, uh, than its apparent infinite supply of Dash 1. Preliminary testing has shown that the dispenser can be damaged normally and is primarily composed of an unremarkable plastic. Due to the ease of containment, um, destruct destructive testing has been halted to avoid ne uh, negating the anomalous effects. Um, Research into how the dispenser reveals its supply of SB uh, of Dash 1 is ongoing. The words try something different today. Sweet and candy red are engraved on the underside. That's pretty dope. Like it, it's again not a good like 
SCP to make a make a um, episode out of it. But my god, yeah, of course they're gonna have panic attacks. They they're looking at themselves bleeding for everywhere. <laughs> Alright, be right back guys. All right, I'm back. Whew. Repayment in kind. I am telling you guys, like making, thinking up of what each SB tile could lead to, it gets very hard now. <sighs> Repayment in kind, I, hmm, what could this be? What if? Um, uh, it's, it's a, it's a dollar bill that you, uh, give to somebody and you're like, Oh, I hope you pay me back. And that dollar bill will always Try, uh, make you not pay back anything anymore and then once they get a bit more like once they get asked a couple more times if you're gonna pay back that dollar bill makes them super aggressive murderous even and the payment is death <laughs> the repayment is death I don't know as I said it's, it gets really hard to like guess after a while SB94, oh wait, it's a safe. SB943 is to be stored in a secure lockbox in a high security containment vault, accessible only to level 2 or higher personnel. For purpose of interrogation, level 1 personnel may request access to SB943, but the request must be approved by level 2 personnel, and the individual signing SB943 out of out must record a date, time, location of use, and appropriate protective measure taken to preserve SB943's integrity. Failure to do so will result in all personnel involved having their service records subject to immediate review and penalties of the motion or termination for those found negligent. 
Uh, okay, description. SCP-943 is a band of unidentified metal adjustable through a sliding mechanism to become anywhere from 5 cm to in diameter to 38 cm in diameter. The band be bears uh, inscribings along its outside surface reading in English that that justice may flow like water. <laughs> be water, my friend. When placed onto a human subject's arm, the device uh, appears to induce visual, auditory, and tactical hallucinations in a staggered pattern. In all cases, the hallucination appears to be one well of an event that is connected to the subject in some way. Invariably, the subject is connected in a way that makes them the aggressor, and in the induced hallucination, the subject assumes the role of victim. All recorded hallucinations have been of conflict and are documented in Experiment Log 1 through Experiment Log 3. Addendum. In each ex uh, experiment, the subject was prepared by repeatedly reminding them of the crime that caused their incarceration, causing it to be foremost in their minds prior to the beginning of the recordings. Uh, experiment 1. So they like be like, you were here because you murdered somebody. You were here because you murdered somebody. And he's like, yes, yes. I'm here because I murdered somebody. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, I, said, I, I almost forgot. <laughs> um, subject D393. 9-3 is guilty of multiple incidents of embezzlement as an employee of a foundation cover company. Dr. Hayden, D39393, put on the bracelet. <laughs> you can't make me do this, you know. I'm a citizen of blank. Actually, D39393, we can, according to the terms of your employment agreement. You know, the one that you never read because of the big number on the first page. But, but, but oh, that, that doesn't mean anything. You, can, you still can do this. I'm a person, not cow for you to use. I'm, I'm aware you're not livestock. Now put on the bracelet, and you'll be on your way to the playing, uh, to repaying, the <laughs> war in the fucking million digits blank you, you owe. By the way, I'm not sure if I can add that. Uh, let me. Can I just quickly check something, guys? Just real quick. Just real, 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 real quick. Um, if I... <gasps> yes! <laughs> okay, this will make it a bit more fun. So, let me read that sentence again. I'm aware you're not... Livestock. Now put on the bracelet, and you put, and you'll be on your way to repaying the <laughs> you owe. <laughs> you never proved that. You can't prove any of that. Three three nine three nine three. You will be sedated, and the bracelet will be placed on you if you continue to resist. Now, put on the bracelet. <laughs> Fuck you. You won't do that. You can't do. At this point, Foundation security personnel neutralized three three nine three nine three with a stun baton and tra strapped him. Under the chair nearby, waiting until D39393 regained consciousness before placing SB943 on his arm. The debt you were paid by participation has been reduced by 10% due to the refusal to cooperate, Mr. <laughs> Further refusal will result in a calling in more severe. Do okay, I need to make sure. This How come it's like. The lo fi is always a different volume? Um, further refusal will result in accordingly more severe dockings. Now tell me how you feel. I, I don't feel anything, really. I have on my arm now. The hell is that thing anyway? Just keep giving me updated, Mr. <laughs> I, I guess I feel a little nervous. No. A lot nervous. God, God what is this thing? <laughs> You're doing well. Keep it up. The subject is wetting profuse and has an elevated heart rate. <laughs> I'm, I'm so, so fucked. D39393 begins to sob softly. Continues to in his vein for approximately five and a half minutes. Oh, man. Oh, man. D39393 perks up slightly. Wait. wait. Shh. Did, did you hear that? Fuck. Well, did you hear D39393? Uh, voices real faint. Though, trying to hear them. Continue, Mr. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, how, how's it going? God, it sounds like I'm back at work. Just a bunch of noise. 
Doctor appears to be switching from talking to the voices addressing him and myself. Approximately three minutes pass, the subject monitoring uh, rapidly to nothing in particular before his voice rises again. Yeah, no, I hadn't seen the butcher. G g uh, sorry. Wait. G sorry, I didn't <laughs> see you there. You, you wanted to show me a letter? Well, all right. Uh, no, I don't know what happened. No, of course not. No, no, it wasn't me. I don't know where the fuck it went. Mr. Can you can you hear me? Hello? Please, it wasn't me. Wh what? Tell the overseers. Me? No, for the record. D39393 out not to have been aware of the existence of O level 5 personnel considering this position held prior to becoming D class personnel. His voice is rising to a shriek. No, I'm I'm not telling the overseers that we were missing over when I had nothing to do with this. You do it. I'm not going to be turned into Kita Bait because of some fucking accounting error. We got to find where the fuck this went before they do. Um, terminating record recording, the subject has clearly demonstrated all three stages of hallucinatory patterns. D39393 will remain under foundation control until his debt is repaid. Experiment 1 has erased of his death to the foundation less 10%. Yeah, he's still like in the millions, isn't he? <laughs> Level 4 eyes only. Subject D39393 cannot be removed from Foundation employment, having demonstrated knowledge of all five level personnel in his experiment and a marked unethical bent in the action leading to his incarceration. Current recommendation upon release is termination. Now, experiment. DOS. Subject D4454 was convicted of sexually abusing and murdering a seven year old child. If I have a. I'm not a, I'm not a person that uses guns, because I'm, I'm scared of guns. Um, but I would shoot this man or woman, whoever this this person is. <laughs> D four four five four. Put on the bracelet. Nah, nah. I don't have to do that. Put me back in my cell. I'm on my lawyer. You will not be afforded the luxury of a lawyer. D four four five four. Put on the bracelet, or you will be terminated by Foundation security staff. I will review records, and believe me, I will not hesitate. Doctor Hayden fucking respect he's like this is now now see this is a person i can fully understand like well like the, the reason why they treat a d-class this way i'm like yes this is a piece of shit person and i, I can and now i see why the, this and this doctor is a good person he's like you sexually abused and murdered a seven-year-old child i am glad you're here and you're gonna suffer <laughs> you you know what i mean why i'm in yes I know exactly what you are. You, you can't tell them. They'll kill me. That is my prerogative, D4454. Put on the bracelet. Oh, okay. Just don't tell them, right? Put on the bracelet. Uh, I'm, I'm afraid, Doctor. Restrain the subject. Security staff wrestle D4454 into a seat and strap the subject in. Oh, oh God, get away. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Help. Why won't anyone help? Security staff back away, D4454 pants for breath. No, 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 no. What is it, D4454? I don't know, he begins to cry. I just, I just know there's something, something's going, that's going to get me. Elaborate, D4454. <laughs> It'll find me. I, I think I, 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 can, I can hear it. Uh, D4454 recalls in his seat, pressing himself as deeply into the steel frame as possible. Doctor, get, get me out of here, please, please. The experiment is not complete, D4454. Will we proceed? <laughs> it's, getting, it's getting closer. We got to get out of here. We have to leave. D4454's eyes widen and he stops speaking for a moment. It hurt me. It hurt me. It hurt me. It hurt me. Begins struggling against his chair with strain. Get, get free me! D4454, what do you see? What is it? It's, it's got me! No, 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 no! D4454 expired to the myocardial infarction at this point and ceased communication. Okay, experiment three. Uh, D31415 was convicted of murder in, second, in the second degree. The bracelet. D4. D three one four five. Uh, D three one four one four five. God damn it. D 
this thing picks up the um, picks it up picks up and examines the bracelet. <sighs> that justice may flow like water. <laughs> really, Doctor, use me as a test subject on this? Yes, we are. The uh, three one four one five. But put the bracelet on, or it will be put on you. <laughs> Whatever. It wasn't my fault. I should be a free man. I told you I'm innocent. Yes, you did. The three one five. The three one four one five. Um, now put the bracelet on. Put on the bracelet and sits in the prize seat. Security person strap him under the chair. How do you feel? No, no different than I did a minute ago. And how do you feel then? Angry that I'm here. Scared, scared too. Very good. Detailing changes to us, please. I remind uh, the three minutes pass. I remind you, the three one five uh, four one five. The cooperation is not op optional. Nothing's changed. I'm strapped in a really uncomfortable chair and you got this thing on my arm and it sucks. What do you want me to say? That be all, D31415. Fine by me. Nothing new, D31415. Uh, no. Uh, terminating experiment and returning D31415 to quarters. Level four eyes only. D31415. One four one five was taken in custody after killing an agent in self-defense during an attempted emergency command during of the subject's vehicle. Agent <laughs> attempted to um, attempted to command the D three one four one five vehicle during a severe containment breach of SCP, <laughs> causing it to release into a nearby town. D three one four one five was a licensed firearms carrier and fired three rounds into agent <laughs> chest, killing uh, killing <laughs> instantly. D31415 was apprehended shortly afterwards, and Asian's <laughs> remains were recovered. Th that was, the, gotta say, repayment in kind is kind of a really cool idea. That is very dope. That is very dope. Very, very, very dope. Mirror maze. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, what if it's a mirror? It's a normal mirror maze. But it's like it's like it changes, like you know how mirror mazes like it's all like illusion and and you and you can get lost. But there's there's a set there's a set path path that is definitely leads you to the exit. Like there's a couple of dead ends and all that, but there's definitely a set path like that. What if this is like that? It's a mirror maze like that. But when you walk in, the path changes all the time. It's just like and you're stuck for in forever, and all you can see is is yourself and. There's no exit, you just walk and walk and walk and walk and walk and you're just like, where is it? Where's the exit? And only occasionally does somebody get out, but they uh, they have no idea how they got out. They just, it was just sheer luck or some or the mirror maze decides to let them out. Holy shit. <laughs> uh, Euclid. SB944 is to be, excuse me, be right back. Hmm. It will be surrounded by a three meter high opaque fence, both to prevent outside access and to allow experimentation unobserved by the public. SB944 is officially listed as a condemned building and construction area signs are posted to explain the fence of area level one. Agents wearing <laughs> amusement park security uniform are to guard the area and prevent unauthorized access. Non D class personnel entering SB944 are cautioned to follow the blue flow lines indicating safe paths to Hollow Fun is off limits due to possible exposure to enormous effects. D class personnel must be outfitted with sub containers, GPS location transmitters before, t permit bring them back, before being permitted to enter SB944. I mean, look at the uh, inside SB944 prior to containment. Look how this looks gorgeous, but in the same time, if, 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 if like. Some of them are mirrors. I can imagine how trippy this must be. SB944 is a single-story building outfitted as a mirror maze, forming an attraction at <laughs> amusement park. In <laughs> after a number of anomalous effects were observed, it was a bit too quiet now. After a number of, number of anomalous effects were observed, the building was secured by the foundation. 
As the effect appears to be localized, the remainder of the park is open to the public. Practically, individuals entering SB944 are capable of walking off the intended path through the maze and into the mirrors. Despite extensive experimentation, the Foundation has been unable to predict when, when and where the anomalies will occur, or the effects of walking through them. In addition, the distortion, uh, distorting mirrors found in the Hall of Fun are sometimes capable of producing permanent distortion in the people viewing them. There's a footnote saying... Similar to SCP-1225, many of these distortions result in the degradation of the object slash subject. Okay. SCP-944 <sighs> was built in 2006 and operated normally until Incident 944-U-1 occurred. It is unknown that uh, what initiated SCP-944's anomalous behavior. Well, then we have Incident 1. Date 2000... Uh... Damn. A 53-year-old male emerged from the maze claiming to have been lost in the maintenance tunnels for three days. SB944 does not contain maintenance tunnels, subject treated to for dehydration and, re and released. Park security assumed individual was intoxicated and details of incident were imaginary. Mm. Date 2000. A 12-year-old boy found severely injured in the maze hallway B with third-degree burns, but um to hands and feet. Subject claimed to have been detained a, in a windowless brick room for approximately seven hours by an individual calling himself Zippo the Pyromania Clown, who burned and it expunged the victim. Victim recalls being told it's all part of the show, kid. <laughs> that is terrifying. SB944 does not contain the area described by the victim. Extensive police search for perpetrator revealed no results. Incident uh, U3, date 2000. 24, uh, a 24-year-old female emerged from a maze, 101.6 centimeters tall after passing before a shrinking mirror in the maze hall of fun. Subject was 175 centimeters uh, on entering maze. Foundation personnel intercepted police report of this inc incident area, area secured, class B amnestics administrated, SCP status established and containment initiated. Additional investigation revealed that uh, individuals are missing after entering SB944. Addendum post containment uh, experimentation. Use of robot drones to navigate SB944 does not appear to trigger anomalous effect, therefore, use of D class personnel experiments is approved. Experiment C1, date 2000. Subject D1. 2154 allowed to walk randomly through SB944. Subject is observed to walk through the mirror 22, hallway C, and disappeared. Uh, disappear. GPS tracking indicated that D1214 D1 was 700 miles away in. Subject were captured and claimed to have walked out of the mirror in the hotel ballroom. Mirror 22 appeared non anomalous when examined after incident. Experiment C2, date 2000. Subject D21332 allowed to enter SB944. Subject walked into Mirror 5, Hallway A. Security team dispatched after hearing subject screaming. D21332 observed trapped in behind Mirror, unable to determine which which mirrors were uh, broken during attempt extraction of D class. It expunged. Uh, experiment C3, date 2000. Uh, D23187, order to enter SCP-944, subjects observed to walk uh, through mirror 15, hallway B, subject found in front of mirror 15, hallway C, deceased, entirely covered with a thin layer uh, of glass, mirror found, mirrors found intact and appear to be non-anomalous. Experiment C4, date 2000. Uh, D24110 ordered to enter SCP-944 and follow a blue line path to Hall of Fun. Subject found collapsed in the Hall of Fun, height extended to 229 centimeters and remotely attract, extracted. Subject expired after 10 minutes due to massive organ damage. Ooh. Ooh. Now this This used to be a fun house. But now it's full of evil clowns. Time we start the countdown and get fucking lost because god damn where is the exit? <laughs> There's some shit in this place. <laughs> I don't wanna be here no more.
this does not look like a safe number. <laughs> yeah, I don't think a rant. Yeah, no, I will pull this with spam. <laughs> Cause I just got a random number to send me a that send me a pic or something I need to download and I was like Yeah, as if I'm gonna just click on that. <laughs> as if I'm just gonna simply click on that shit. Crazy. Okay. Box of Shaw Shawapti. I heard of Shawapti. I now this is the first time I'm gonna look it up though. Ah, uh, yes, 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 of course, of course, that, yeah, duh. So there's a whole box of these things, huh? What if it has spirits? This, the spirits guide your hand. Well, I don't know, maybe. Uh, Euclid. SB945 is to remain sealed and locked inside a steel chest in a 3 times 3 meter cell at the storage site. The cell on, is under video surveillance and the walls are carved with deep, irregular patterns to handle escape. Any staff who, have con who had contact with SB945 or its creation must be registered with on-site security. The contents of SB945 should be counted and locked 24 hours after the monthly D-class termination or after the death of any staff who have previously had contact with SB945 or any of its creation. Dash 1 is to be contained in a locked uh, glass case separated from SB945. If Dash 1 is not found within its case, the site has to be immediately locked down for a security sweep. So description SB945 is a rough wooden Egyptian Shawapti box dating from approximately 1500 to 1300 BC, currently holding 186 clay Shawapti figure, figures which have been re recently sculpted. This designated Dash 2 to, to Dash 187. When the foundation became aware of the SB945, there was only a single ancient figurine within the box, designated Dash 1. In addition to the obvious age of Dash 1, it is distinct for being the only figure that bears any inscriptions. Oh. Oh. As the box was originally des des designed to hold a full set of 401 figurines, it is realized that some of the originals may still exist outside of containment. Okay, so are the other ones that uh, the two to 187 are those the other ones that they found, or is it some other reason why there's more now? The inscription on SB945 and Dash 1 are invocations to call the Sharapti figurines forth to the labor of deceased individuals. It was previously believed that these phrases must be read aloud to activate SB945, however, the box and figurines with in have since demonstrated their ability to act on their own in regards to any person who has come in contact with them. After an individual who had previously contact with SB945 passes away, Dash 1 will vanish. Within the next 24 hours, a crude clay replica of the deceased individuals will manifest within a one mile radius of SB945. Hmm. I see. The replica tends to appear near SB945 or in the former living area of the deceased individual. The replica will manifest by stepping out of an, out of an appropriately sized flat surface, usually on a wall or closed door. Replicas have been observed traveling from one location to another by stepping into a wall and manifesting elsewhere. <laughs> Yoga teleport! If any other applicable individuals pass away, the initial replica will begin sculpting new show up D figurines to place inside SB945. Once the new figurines have been placed in the box, clay replicas of the other individuals will manifest. The replicas will display the basic properties of the deceased individuals that they are based upon. They have memories and knowledge relevant to the profession of the individual and the basic physical capabilities required to perform their tasks. Although they can speak, see, hear and smell, their facial features are inanimate. The figurines are not anatomically correct, but prefer to wear the clothes of work or work uniform of the deceased. Damn, okay. A replica will... Um, A replica will go about the daily business of the deceased, giving priority to, an unfinished, to any unfinished work left behind at the time of death. 
If accosted, the replica will respond in a polite manner and insist that it be allowed to complete its task so that the deceased may rest comfortably in the next world. When supervised, replicas will behave basically uh, passively, although they will uh, follow orders and use violence within the course of their duty as applicable. Their performance has been described as adequate. Although they feel no pain, they are merely dried clay and can be destroyed with an appropriate force or by breaking the corresponding chiropti. If the first replica is destroyed, Dash 1 will reappear inside SB945 until, until it activates again. Addendum. Replicas actively attempt to kill living beings when left unsupervised. So of course they do. <laughs> when does an SCP not do that? The purpose of increasing their numbers. Ah, yeah, that makes sense. This behavior has uh, even extends to the non-humans, especially cats. During Incident S uh, 7B, replicas managed to overwhelm and replace the entire staff of storage site <laughs> during the test to determine if SCP-945's creation could be used to offset the Foundation high turnover rate. The initial replicas smothered two security guards in their sleep and pushed a senior researcher down a flight of stairs while directing suspicion towards D-class personnel. As more replicas were created, they began to coordinate the action to create a series of accidents and containment breach, uh, breaches that allowed them to increase the numbers sufficiently to overrun the remaining survivors. Wow, this, these guys are evil. <laughs> we want more! We want to increase our army, we need to kill everybody around us. After taking the side, the replicas maintained it and kept all other local SCPs contained according to proper procedures. The site was reclaimed without casualties but because lacked the training and, and equipment to resist mobile task for and used predictable tactics from basic security manuals showing none of the cunning that was involved in the site's takeover. It has been theorized that SB-945's creation will cease making new figurines once the full set of 5 401 has been restored, therefore it is not recommended to destroy any new figurines creating, uh, created during a containment breach. So basically saying like, just let people die. <laughs> don't kill, don't dis or, or don't destroy them, like don't let people die, but actually they don't, didn't say that people die, they're just saying like, don't let any of these uh, replicas get destroyed, otherwise, you know. They might or might not want to kill somebody to replace that person that they lost. A formal discussion. A formal, not formal. A formal discussion. A table that if you sit on it, you suddenly talk like, like the late 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 british people like super like um 1700s where everybody's like posh and has has a <laughs> um old english vocabulary and they talk between each other like yeah like the like the posh uh, posh rich people <laughs> oh that is this is most highly rated this is pretty highly rated and i see five three six there is that what i saw which is five, three, six, three, four, four. Physical law testing chamber. Ah, yes. Yeah, yeah. The chamber that you can ch change gravity, light, and all that stuff. And only one of them really is good to use. Although everything else kind of just kills you. <laughs> or fucks around with physics a bit too much. <laughs> SB-946 is to be kept in the center of a 5x5x5 five times five times five meter windowless certain proofed containment chamber. The only light source in the room is to be a single spotlight situated directly above SB-946. Cameras and audio recording, uh, devices monitor, um, wait, uh, wait, camera, cameras and audio recording devices monitor SB-946 at all times to ensure all SB-946 activity is recorded. A minimum of one skilled debater is to remain on call at all times. Anyone who observed the debate between Dash 1 and Dash 2 where classified foundation information is revealed for which they do not have clearance is to be administered class A amnestics. So there's some, there's some secrets flying around on this table. I'm actually going to get something to drink real quick. Be right back.
Ooh. Ooh. Especially delicious. I was looking at the monster energy and I was like, I can't feel any, but it's Sunday and it's like 10 in the, in the evening. Uh, that would be a mistake if I drank that. So, SB946 is a wooden table. So, I guess part of it correctly, it is a table with two accompanying chairs at unpredictable intervals ranging from two to four times per week two men will appear uh, designated dash one and dash two taking the two seats dash one and dash two will then have a civil argument or debate about a random subject the topic of these arguments has varied from existential concept to trivial and mundane subjects in some circumstances these debates have, have focused on a hypothetical event and the merits of its occurrence in these cases the outcome of the argument manifests itself in reality at any time during the debate, an outside observer may join the debate with a new chair appearing at the table and the dimensions of the table altering fit to fit all parties. parties. Should any of the guests make an ad hominem argument or make an intentionally false or misleading statement, Dash One will criticize them. If they continue, Dash One will state that they are no longer welcome in the debate, at which point the chair will disappear. <laughs> Any further attempts for this subject to communicate with Dash 1 or 2 will be ignored. Following incident, uh, 946, see addendum 2. It has now become clear that, S that Dash 1 and Dash 2 appear to possess om omniscience or at minimum any knowledge that may be relevant to the discussion. So, boys, <laughs> boobs or booty, <laughs> thighs. I'm more of a feet have a guy. Leave the table. <laughs> the chair disappears. What? Come on, man. Feet all the way. Nah, nah. Nah. We would have, we would have respected thighs, personality, face, <laughs> any, and the entire body, but feet? No, you're a freak. Get out. <laughs> Dash one and dash two appear physically to be normal humans. Dash one is the tall is a tall black man with short gray hair and a long beard, who is referred to as Harman. Dash two is thin, bald white man who is referred to as Garshin. When arguing, both men seem capable of creating three-dimensional images and some summoning small objects as a means of stimulating events or providing information. That is pretty dope, though. Let me explain to you, like if anything you explain, it's just like fucking images. Just like, just float around and he's like, you see this? <laughs> you see this? This is your mom. And... <laughs> On the 7th, 24th, see in some report uh, 646, uh, 946, dash 12, uh, dash 1, dash 2 is requested that SB946 never be exposed to multiple light sources during one of the debates. In the event that it is exposed to multiple light sources, all but one light source will fail. It is unknown how SB946 achieves the effective nature of this effect. Prior to this request, SB946 did not exhibit its behavior. Upon questioning, Dash 2 explained that the debate had to lead to, be, led to the conclusion that a single light source improves the mood. <laughs> I kind of wish there was like an interview or like one of the debates somewhere in this mi in this mix. Incident report um, nine four nine nine four six on the fourth eighth dash one dash two discussion shifted focus unexpectedly to the subject of gravity. The debate included a uh, mention of several concepts in theoretical physics, including string theory, Redacted. and. Both uh, men seem familiar with concepts barely understood by modern science, as well as a previously under undemonstrated knowledge of several highly classified foundation documents, most notably SV536 testing logs. So, like the yeah, the grab the the physics chamber, the physics test chamber. Uh, dash four one was arguing against the existence of gravity, while Dash two considered and commented on his argument. Roughly 14 minutes into the discussion, one duty researcher, Dr. entered the SCP-946 containment chamber and joined the debate. On later questioning, Dr. claimed that he was simply stopping a potential disaster. 
He argued that without gravity, the universe as a whole would cease to exist in its current form. Dash responded by pointing out that the future form, form could easily be superior. Dash to agree with Dr. B who continued to argue with Dash 1 for nearly two hours before, frustra before frustrated Dash 1 gave up. Containment procedure updated in light of this event. Object class upgraded to key depending approval. Yeah, I mean, they did say that some of the arguments can lead to something becoming true. So if they argue, if they decided to like agree that gravity was not a thing, <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> The whole world would have been screwed. <laughs> All right. A uh, formal discussion. That's really interesting. I you know, you know how sometimes you have like the the internet discussions and arguments, and you're like, who the fuck cares, right? It's it's, it's not going to change your life. This is the opposite of that. <laughs> You should care, because whatever they agree with, will change. <laughs> um, a son of a... Expedition redacted. Okay, um... So I guess it means son of a bitch. But what if it's an actual... Well, I mean, love. If it's, if it's a male puppy, of course that's a son of a, a bitch, right? Scientifically speaking. But what if? What if? This dog gives birth to human children. I mean, there is a, there is a, a woman, a woman that gives birth to goats and a goat that gives birth to children, so uh, uh, to human children. So I'm not, uh, I'm not. Uh, it's not a far-fetched theory. I'm just saying it's not like I, it's not weird. <laughs> I love how like, look, it's only this short. But then with the interview, lock, like, nah, nah, we're not done yet. <laughs> Excuse me, Keto. Ah, well, you son of a bitch. <laughs> So if you go around saying you son of a bitch, do you then ref refer to the SCP or to somebody else specifically, yeah? <laughs> if I were to call somebody a son of a bitch in the SCP Foundation, would they be highly insulted because it's a key to class SCP I'm referencing? Or would they be highly insulted because I'm calling the mom a bitch? It's the important questions that we ask you. <laughs> SCP-9543 is... Oh god. SCP-9543 is... 947 is stored on a textile in a USB drive. This drive is currently stored in a secure lock in the Site 42 digital armor armory. Ah, okay, I didn't expect it to be digital. I will be honest with you, I did not expect that. I thought that the bitch would be physically here. <laughs> Um, the junior researcher uh, Gotham Ramesh is currently working with Mobile Task Force Upsilon 4 Sugar Pill to develop a counter mimetic agent for SB947. Description SB947 is a contagious mimetic expletive defined by its creator as meaning a real fake annoying person or thing that you wish would just snap off already. Any English speaker who hears or reads SB947 will automatically understand its definition, know the name of its creator, and begin to incorporate it into their vocabulary. Over time, affected individuals will gradually replace all expletives in their vocabulary with SB947. So, instead of saying shit or fuck, you always will say son of a bitch. <laughs> Which... It's not the worst thing. I mean, okay, if you ever want to say, uh, I had to go shit, or I want to fuck, or fuck you, it might be a bit confusing. <laughs> you might just, like, hey, I'm going to the bathroom first, just to solve a bitch real quick. It's like, what did you just say? <laughs> you heard me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, SB947 first came to the attention of the Foundation on the 30th of June 2017 when it was used in tweets by members of the British cabinet. The anomalous properties of SB947 were immediately recognized through the insertion of its creator's name. 
An investigation of the cabinet and social media activity traced the meme to tweet to a tweet made by one Gautam Ramesh, an Indian immigrant living with his parents in Leeds, England. Ramesh sent the initial infection vector via Twitter and Facebook to the social media accountants accounts of several British defense contractors, where it rapidly spread and was able to infect the British cabinet within two days. Ramesh's initial tweet was as follows. You should check you should check out this cool technology or you'll look like a <laughs> Okay, I feel like I'm going to use that voice quite a lot now. His Facebook post was, was as follows. Hi all, I just come up with a very cool new technology. Ideas and words. Help me spread the word or you'll look like... Real at this t <laughs> At this time, SB947 is currently... Is, wait, SB947 is used by approximately... Percent of all English speakers worldwide. Worldwide. <laughs> Ramesh, what have you done? <laughs> Interview with Gordon Ramesh. Shortly after in identification of SB947's anomalous properties, Gordon Ramesh was brought in for an interview. Junior researcher, researcher Ashwin Pichai was chosen to interview him due to Pichai's previous exposure to SB947. Date 4th July 2017. Dr. Pichai began log, extraneous introduction omitted. Um, anyways, I'd like to ask you about the word. Expertive redacted. Oh, uh, yeah, sure, yeah. Uh, what do you want to know? Well, how does it work? There's nothing else even remotely like it that exists in the world. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is pretty cool stuff. I mean, so, uh, the human brain is like a computer, yeah? Yes. So if the brain is a computer, maybe you can program it like one. That's pretty much what a language is, if you think about it. You can teach people uh, through, like, writing and speaking and feed them knowledge and that sort of thing. And you feed people information through speaking and writing and the process is automatically. So I was thinking about that one day and I was wondering, the brain's like a computer, right? So maybe you could create a brain virus. Uh, I mean a computer virus, but like the brain. Not like a real virus, like uh, Ebola or something. Something then that when you hear it, you automatically process it and start replicating it. I see, that sounds a lot like a meme. Yeah, actually, something like, uh, keep calm and carry on. Well, actually, that's a, that's a bad example. Something like, hmm, don't worry, I know what you mean. But those kinds of memes are just things that are easy to remember or fun to parrot. Expedition redacted. Doesn't just do that. It, hi it actively hijacks the brain, making people only use it as a swear, even if they try to say something else. How did you accomplish that? Oh, God. Language is, a key. language is a key thing, right? When you hear a new word, you have to remember what it means. The word is meaningless by itself. You also need to know the meaning or the context of the word for it to do anything. But once you know the meaning, the brain automatically processes it and I, my, my nose is itchy as fuck. That word have to meaning in the future. So the trick is figuring out, figuring out how to make the word encode the meaning in, in itself. And if you can do that, then you can encode a lot more stuff into it. Stuff like making the brain want to use it as a curse word exclusively. The breakthrough was... Data redacted by order of the problem of the meme text. So once I had the actual uh, software, I just needed to wrap it up in an actual word and give it a meaning. I was encoded, encoded with my, my name in it, you know, as a watermark. Speaking of languages, we noticed that people who don't speak or understand English are unaffected by the word. Why is that? So going back to the computer analogy, right? You know what a programming language is. This is basically the same thing. Expedition redacted. It's a program written in English, so your brain needs to be able to run English to run it. So why did you pick Expedition redacted? Specifically, why that meaning in particular? I mean, I'm looking for a job. Programming the human brain is cool, but you know what the economy being is like? I thought the military of the government would be pretty interested in this kind of thing, yeah? It's a proof of concept. It's pretty harmless and even helpful. It stops people from using actual harmful swears and like racial slurs. But if you can't do that, you could do stuff like perhaps hypnotize terrorists and stuff. Like actually hypnotize them. So I was trying to get the government's attention, show them that I can take the initiative and that I can really help them out. You work for the government, right? I'm a self-motivated worker. I have experience with Python and C. And C. I've got a master's degree in neuroscience and I have work experience. I can send you my resume. You don't want to work for the SCP Foundation, my son. You don't. 
That's one place you don't want to work in. I promise you that. <sighs> Is that a spot on the wall? Nope. You can't get me with that. I already read about the spider SCP in the very beginning, so I'm already, I'm already past that. <clears throat> You tried, you tried. Welcome to Fluffy Sexy Bitch. Welcome to the stream, buddy crack. I see you still up for your usual shenanigans. Uh, the workaholic. A person that has not slept at all and just keeps on working, 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 and he should be dead by now, but he isn't because he is an SCP, so he, but he keeps on, he keeps on keeping on. All right, he just never stops. He just, the grind never stops. Uh, brand mosquito repellent. <laughs> uh, what about nine? Well, that's gonna happen in. Wait, hold on. A minute. That's gonna happen next weekend. That's gonna happen next weekend. We're almost done with our ten today as well. We have the, we have this one. Weird SCP. Yeah, there's a bunch of weird them. <laughs> there's a bunch of weird named ones. Um, yeah, I think the workaholic is just a person that just survives working nonstop. He, sh he shouldn't, but he does. It's a safe one. SB948 is contained with an area IE05, and no extra precautions are required for the area beyond. Subway frogs. <laughs> yeah, there's. Dude. If you think those are weird tiles, I tell you what, there, are, there were some that I read before. Um, Require the area beyond stands secrecy and amnestic procedure for foundation teaching and reaching a center within a civilian campus. SB948 is to be regularly medically examined with blood work taken at least once a month. Where possible, ex these examinations should occur within area IE05 with a focus on following SB948 freedom to continue speaking. All area IE05 staff and students are permitted to enter and exit the Pythagoras Theater freely with use of um, timesheet to be posted outside the theater daily. Supervisors are to be assigned on rotation to ensure SB948 is monitored at all times and that no individual spend excessive amounts of time with the object. SB948 should be provided with chalk, markers and other materials as appropriate. This is also the responsibility of the supervisors with reimbursement of up to 200 euros per annum. Uh, allowable from the site's pretty cash fund. Okay, SB948 is Seamus O. Thale, a former surgeon in the Matter Hospital, Dublin. Um, SB948 has been continuously lecturing on the variety of medical subjects in the Pythagoras Theatre, Trinity College, Dublin since July 4th, 1984. SB948 shows an anomalous healing effect with physically injured subjects introduced to its lecture theater, he, uh, theater healing if it wait with physically injured subjects introduced to its lecture theater healing if it is discussed the relevant medical procedures this healing this healing effect does not seem to be any more effective than traditional medicine put but can offer improvement when used in conjunction footnote Testing on the on this aspect of SB948 is limited to the ethical concerns. Uh, I, I, she... Application for testing may be made to the area direct directors to be judged on a case by case basis, with appeals to the ethics com committee. Uh, com uh, committee. Committee. There we go. Committee. Allowed. The ethics committee ruling is final in all such cases. SB948 does not display any healing effects or if injuries or illness it is not familiar with. Beginning 1st, 1st, 2015, a reading list of textbooks and medical uh, papers have been provided to SB948 to keep it up to date with modern medicine, which has shown a marked increase in its healing ability. Another footnote. A uh, suggested addition to this list can be made via. For, uh, via form of SB, SCPF IE05 948 3. 
Um, SB948 also displays a mild secondary calming effect. Many people ent entering the theater while it is lecturing, uh, while it is lecturing, report feeling refreshed and safe regardless of the previous condition. Prolonged exposure to this effect can lead to short-term dizziness and trouble with fine motor skills. This effect generally, oh god, now some, now one of the eyelashes wants to like hop into my eyeball. Um, uh, this effect generally only manifests after 12 to 15 hours of continuous exposure to the object and thus are considered negligible. SB948 shows physical signs of extreme emaciation and sleep deprivation but does not seem to need food, drink or sleep and commonly refuses them when offered, preferring not to interrupt his lectures. Three. As of 1995, SB948 has begun accepting offers of water and other drinks in order to clear the pipes. As such, it will now take occasional breaks to urinate. SB948 supervises to is to accompany it to any bathroom breaks. Uh, SB948 becomes extremely aggravated when removed from the lecture theater or otherwise prevented from lecturing, often requiring restraint. SB948 has proven am amicable in all other aspects of interaction, allowing medical procedures to go ahead without argument so long as they do not impede its lecturing. Discovery SB948 was brought to the foundation attention on the third day of his lecture. What was that then believed to be a marathon world record attempt? The building was cleared and news and news disseminated that the anomaly had collapsed from exhaustion during the fifth day of lecturing. As two foundation teaching centers were already located within the college at the time, negotiation of, the ch of a change of department was relatively smooth and the now permanent I area IE5 was established around the object. This guy was just teaching in there for five solid straight days and was like, I didn't leave him. <laughs> we ain't done. <laughs> The bell doesn't dismiss you, I do. <laughs> and I will never dismiss you. Addendum 5, 7, uh, addendum 5th, 7th, 2013. Dr. Eleanor Bridge, a researcher recently employed at Area IE5, has shown to be re resistant to SB948's 9 calming effect. Dr. Bridge has been assigned as a specialist supervisor tasked with befriending SB948 for the purpose of the cooperation and general QOL of the object. Select the conversation transcript. Okay. Log 5th, 1st, 2015, uh, 20, 58, uh, 59, 21, uh, 6, only like 7 minutes long, okay. <laughs> I don't really have the time for interruptions, Eleanor. We need to get through this topic with this lecture. I just want to give you those uh, these textbooks, uh, these books before I head it out. They're letting you have them now. Basic medicine stuff, but maybe some things you might be up to date with. I can get you anything you like, with a reason. I appreciate the thought, of course. Eleanor, but I do wish you wait until I finish my lectures, bring them to me. I never seem to catch the ends, uh, Samus. Seamus? Samus? I'm terrible, aren't I? I was trying to slip out of early. I must be your worst student. Eleanor, you mustn't joke about yourself like that. You're a wonderful student. <laughs> Mark whispers. Uh, you're rather one of my favorites. Uh, thank you. That's that's actually nice to know. Okay, and now I'm not sure if that Mark whispers in one of my favorites is that is that him to do? Is trying to like flirt? <laughs> I'm not quite sure. Uh, Lock third fourth 2015 seven thirteen till seven blank. Okay. Eleanor, late late as always. You know me, Samus. I was sleeping in. Did I miss anything important? Oh, this and that. Listen, I was reading your textbook the other day. It's wonderful how medicine has progressed. I rejected much of it at first, but I realize now I'm simply behind the times. It's been quite some time since I've educated myself on modern science, it seems. It's great that you were so open to it. I used to be very close-minded, you know. But well, life in medicine teaches you to always be open to new ideas. I had, I had a colleague. Uh, have I ever told you about Cillian? You haven't. The wonderful surgeon, wonderful man. He was always so open to things, new ideas, experiences, taught me a lot. Uh, Eleanor, I was thinking, since I seem to be utterly useless as a teacher, why don't I turn this lecture into something more of a debate? I believe we could stand to learn from each other, you and the other students here. It's your lecture, Zemus. I'm sure the higher-ups won't mind. Right, yes, your higher-ups. Go on and let them know. Maybe this time they won't drag me away. Rubs the bandage over, over his hand. You know that was in, was for your own health, Samus. We only ever 
Please, please don't try to persuade me. I know I have acted rashly in the heat of things. Stop an old man, not at all ready to finish my lecture. Please, just just don't lump yourself in with them, dear. And go and grab a seat now. Oh, that is, that is, a, that is sad to read. Records show uh, Cillian McBridge who worked with SCP-948 between 1961 and 1980 in the Matter Hospital. His close friendship with SCP-948 was known by the mentors from early in the residence and there uh, is evidence that they stayed in contact following McBridge um, Removed to America in 1980 to pursue a well-paid position in John Hopkins Hospital, Baltimore. Oh, I don't know. Leaving so soon? You know me, Samus. Always trying to slip out early. I'm, I'm actually going to be gone for a while. I, Before you say that, I've been meaning to ask you something. Not quite relevant to the lecture, I don't know, but... Yes? Well, I was reading DSM-5 and I couldn't find an entry for, uh, for homosexuality. Could have... Could have another name now, perhaps. I saw that gender dysphoria was finally added, which I must say is a rather improvement, at least in my view. Um, well, it was considered somewhat backward to consider it a mental illness. There's nothing wrong with being gay or bi or whatever, it's just cultural bias. Uh, lots of people reckon it should be the same for dysphoria, actually. Um, are you aware of the ref referendum? The one people have been wearing all, the, all those yes pins for? It's to legalize marriage equality across all genders passed last week. Well, uh, well, uh, I think that's a wonderful step toward, forward in thinking. Truly wonderful. My friend Cillian, he, uh, my friend Cillian, he had been delighted. He, he was one, uh, he was one, a gay man. We'd, he'd have been delighted. You don't talk much, uh, you don't talk about him much. Oh, sorry, it's not... <laughs> Cillian McBride and, Mid and, Mid and Dr. Bridge. I accidentally said Cillian McBridge, so I thought, I thought Dr. Bridge was fucking dipped out of it. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> but now I get it. Cillian was an, was an activist when, when things were, when they were rather dire. When, um, well, it wasn't a good time and Cillian had the courage to speak up. I never did. Always too scared to lose my job, I guess. I shouldn't be talking about this in the middle of a lecture. Rather unprofessional, my apologies. Well, um, where were we? Right, okay. Counseling the parent of children who have been recently diagnosed with terminal disease. Tough topic. Dr. Bridge attempts to say goodbye to SB948, but it is ignored. After some hesitation, Dr. Bridge leaves the lecture hall without SB948 seeming to notice. This SB is sad. It seems like he's like, just this enormous effect just lets me be stuck in this endless like lecture. Dr. Bridge definitely like feels bad for him because like he's not even noticing when somebody leaves. He's so in his zone of working that people can literally just walk out. Follow up investigation by American branches of the foundation show that McBride was fired from his job in John Hopkins Hospital following his uh, diagnosis of HIV AIDS in December 1982. Mc McBride died of pneum uh, pneumonia in June 19 1984 leaving a large part of his estate to SCP-948. Based on the average delivery speeds between Baltimore and Dublin at the time, it is estimated that SCP-948 would have received news of McBride's death and its inheritance between the 21st and the 28th of June, one two weeks before beginning his lecture. Dr. O'Twathail, could I interrupt for a bit? Sa uh, Samus, dear. Call me Samus. I, Samus, could I ask you, could I ask you about something personal? Some medical ailment, Eleanor? You're usually rather healthy, at least to my knowledge. It's sort of a health thing, I guess. I wouldn't ask like this normally, but I'm just... I'm fed up of dealing with myself. Oh, feel free to share. I'm not under oath, but I promise not to pass it on. Not a soul will hear, will hear what you say here, I swear it. You do know we are recorded here, right? Ah. Well, I'd forgotten, but yes, it also rather take the wind out of my sails, regardless, Eleanor. I'd be happy to help you out with whatever your issue is. <sighs> Do you know why I was assigned to you, Samus? I'd assumed it was due to how well we got on. Originally, though, before we officially met, when I only observed your lectures. Well, no, I wasn't aware you were assigned to me in any sense that early on. <sighs> it's because I don't experience... 
Well, uh, my file says I'm resistant to SB four nine four eight's calming effect. But what it really means is that I don't get all happy and dopey when I walk in here because I don't. Doctor Bri uh, Bri Bridge, Doctor Bridge, sorry, pauses for a second before continuing rubbing her wrist. I'm not happy, Samus. I don't know if I'm able to be happy. I don't know. That's 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 terrible. I'm glad you're wa uh, talking to me though. Before you go off, and well, before you go making rash decisions, I um I already have. I tried to kill myself last year. That's why I haven't been around for a while. I don't think you know this. I don't know, my God. I really don't know what to say. That's, uh, yeah. I wouldn't eat either, honestly. I just... Please, I don't know. What can I do for you? Can you fix me? SB948 does not reply for some time. It removes its glass and wipes them slowly, then places them back on his face. I don't know what you're asking. You don't fix people. Not in that way. You fixed others though. I've seen it. Just by talking, lecturing, bones healed, skin patched, ga giant scars just gone. You killed a kid of cancer after days of reading up on it. So you can fix me, right? You have to be able to. SB948 appears extremely uncomfortable. Eleanor, what you are describing is impossible. That's not how medicine works. But I've seen you do it, not, not read about it, not seen on, on, on camera, but actually watched as you cure people without even touching them. Look, I've got a book on depression and brain chemistry shit in my bag. Can you just... No. These things you claim, either you are lying or there are some, or they are some, some perversion of your sick mind. Don't push your madness on me. Ask me to play along. So he's not aware that he's, uh, that he's healing people. Dr. Bridge begins to cry. I'm a man of medicine, Eleanor, of science. Never in my life has someone come to me with such such outstanding lies. I thought better of you. You can't even, Im you can't even imagine I'm telling the truth. Uh, the truth? That, that, that there are wonders of science you haven't even dreamed of? You've been lecturing for 32 years, Samus. Non-stop. You never stop to wonder how you managed that? Don't be absurd, I can't stop. Just pack up and waltz out into, into a world I don't recognize. A world without... Look, I'm here now and I'm teaching and that's all that matters. All, all that matters. You don't know what it means to try to live in a world that doesn't accept you. A world where you are a damn criminal for who you are. A world without... without a world without... Without... SB948 sits down beside Dr. Bridge. Without him? There's a long silence. After approximately four minutes, SB948 opens his mouth to speak, then closes it without saying anything. Conversation resumes after nine minutes of silence. I've been monstrous just now, Eleanor. I didn't think I had it in me to lash out like that. I hope you can accept that I'm truly sorry to have spoken to you that way. In truth, I've suspected myself for, well, I suppose for a number of decades. What you've been through, I've been through it myself in my own way, denying reality, trying to find a way out. Puts his hand over Eleanor's. Eleanor, what you're asking of me, it won't work. You don't fix anger and heartbreak like you fix a muscle inside you. What you need is a therapist, someone more up to date in this old corpse. I, I have a therapist now, actually. I had to, 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 so I could be clear to work. Adelaide, she. Is that an, okay, some, somebody else, okay. She's, she's lovely, but it's also just so fucking frustrating, you know, every two steps forward, one step back. Dr. Bridge sniffs and wipes her nose on her sleeves. Yeah, I never understood the, that expression, to be quite frank. Ultimately, I want you one more step forward each time. Dr. Bridge does not reply. I, I can't magic away your pain, Eleanor, but I can talk. I'll always be here, too. <laughs> can't bloody escape, really. I'm a hell of a workaholic. Dr. Bridge laughs weakly between sobs. I'm terrible, aren't I? I was trying to slip out early. Now, now, Eleanor, you mustn't joke about that. You're one of my favorites. God! <laughs> Fuck me! <laughs> that was... F that was so good! Oh! Oh! That was depressing. That was so depressing. Oh my god. Finally, SCP that made me feel something. 
all the other ones are like uh, are of course like fucking wild and fun to read and some of them are terrifying to imagine but there's also of course some scps where you just go like man <laughs> fuck one well, entertainment land i don't even want to guess what this could be about i'm i'm sad what <laughs> Yo! <laughs> oh my god, dude. Uh, uh. That's rough, buddy. It is indeed. <laughs> Fuck me. You know what this did to me? Emotional damage! Very high emotional damage. That that hurt. That one hurt. Damn. God. I. I fuck, dude. <laughs> I just imagine like this wonderful elderly man that just works non-stop, right? And, but he cares for you and then you come up to him like, and you know he can do anomalous magical healing, but he doesn't really see it that way. He just doesn't see it. And they just, they both have the trauma and issues to deal with, but they can't really help each other out. Wow. Uh, safe. The area in which SP-949 manifests itself is to be surrounded by two meter tall electrical fencing. The perimeter of the containment area is to be patrolled. By the way, what does it look like? Like this guy, this guy right here is about to like Pokemon battle <laughs> the fucking moose. Um... Sorry, the minute of the condiment area is to be patrolled by guards at all times supporting groups of four. To the size of SB-949, use of vehicles is authorized during security patrol. Any civilians approaching SB-949 are to be taken to foundation custody in those with a class A amnestic. Exploration of SB-949 is to be carried out using D-class personnel. Exploration of SB-949 must be authorized by three members of level th uh, four personnel. Description SB-949 is a large amusement park located in the state of <laughs> which... According to the entrance gate and several documents within the park is designated one entertainment land. Um, yeah, SCP-949 has been observed to periodically disappear from its location on several occasions, often reappearing several days after with, after with new facilities. So it keeps on growing? Or it's just the insides just change? Facilities inside SB-949 demonstrate highly anomalous properties, more information on which is available in Facility Log 1. These anomalous facilities do not appear to, uh, to intentionally cause harm to humans and no casualties have occurred during exploration of SB-949 as of yet. All of SB-949's uh, facilities are staffed and maintained by instances of Dash 1. Instances of Dash 1 appear similar to typical amusement park mascots and the costumes that depict a variety of animals. All instances of, of Dash 1 seem to wear a unique costume and no duplicates have been signed, cited to date. Autopsy of recovered uh, Dash 1 instances show that their interior is composed entirely of wool, confirming a lack of human presence. Dash 1 instances consistently maintain a cheerful attitude despite the situation even when being dis dissected or otherwise injured. <laughs> oh, like, no, <laughs> they have like the Olaf thing. <laughs> oh look, I've been impaled. <laughs> You'd be like, they're like... Okay, uh, I, can't, I can't expect you to scream in agony. <laughs> uh, several advertisements of SPs currently in containment are present in the form of posters or souvenirs. SP depicted in these advertisements include, but are not limited to, <laughs> all SPs depicted appear to be related to individual or organization known as Dr. One Entertainment. This, together with the name of the amusement park, suggests that it is the creation of its entity. Now we have an interview. Interviewer D94923 reading questions from Dr. 
uh, interviewee instance of Dash One, Sammy the Salamander. We have Marty the Moose here, and it looks like they all have like names that, well, whatever the animalistic uh, animal is. So Salamander, the name has to start with an, with an S, or Moose starts with an M. So here we go. Um, hello, Dash One. Hiya. What? Well, how do you know my name? Uh, appears uneasy at this point. Uh, oh wait, the dash one appears uneasy at this point. Well, could the one the tamer land, huh? <laughs> N never mind, I guess. Uh, can you identify yourself? I'm Sammy the Salamander. Where does SB949 go when it disappears? The park isn't ready yet, friend. <laughs> what do you mean it's not ready? <laughs> Sorry, kids. Sammy has to go. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> After the interview, Dash One fled at a remarkable speed. It was a salamander. <laughs> well, actually, yeah, it's a salamander. They are pretty quick. My god, my nose is annoyingly itchy, really deep inside. <laughs> but still, the name Hook a Duck, uh, maintain, maintaining Dash One instance Frank the Fox. The city contains several animate dog toys which the subject must retrieve from a central pool area using a hook. Dog toys demonstrate panic and pain when hooked. When subjects succeed, succeed in retrieving three animate do uh, dog toys and maintaining, Dash One rewards them with a large teddy bear. I'm not sure how I feel about hooking ducks and they go like, <coughs> just in massive pain. Like, no, thank you. Spooky Manor. Uh, maintaining, maintaining is Birdie the Bat. Facility resembles a haunted house, attraction present in many regular amusement parks upon emerging from the facility. The subject appeared to have several limbs and a human head stitched to it. Okay. The subject was not aware of, this con uh, of these additions until they were brought to his attention. The human head attached appeared to give the subject information on rats as they explored the park. Random River, rip uh, Random river Rapids, Terry the Trout. Facility uh, appears to be a river ride similar to those used in regular amusement parks. So we remain in the facility for 30 minutes before emerging. The subject reported no um, no abnormalities other than the presence of several sea creatures with seemingly random positions, limbs, eyes, and gills. That's why it's called random river rap rapids. R bumper cars. Build the bathroom. Facility is a bumper car attraction identical to those used in regular amusement parks. Upon entering a bumper car, all bumper cars in the facility began moving independently and attempt to consume each other using rudimentary jaws formed from splits in the metal. When subject fell out of the bumper car, they were ignored and the other bumper car continued to consume each other until a loud buzzer sounded. Cars immediately ceased moving and began to regrow missing sections, which displayed different coloration than the original portions. That is just scary. <laughs> A uh, document was delivered to Overseer H uh, HQ by an unknown entity on... <laughs> Greetings! Due to the continued support of our products, Dr. Wonder Entertainment would like to kindly invite his valid customer to the grand opening of Wonder Entertainment Land. The grand opening will take place on... <laughs> and Dr. Wonder Entertainment hopes it will be a fun-filled night for the whole family! Guests will have access um, to all of the park's facilities and will be invited to watch the soon to be released fire fireworks. As Dr. Von Entertainment is sure, to, is sure the O5 Council will attend, representative of Dr. Von Entertainment will arrive to escort them to Von Entertainment land on the morning before the grand opening. Hope to see you soon, Dr. Von Entertainment. And that's, that's that, that's it. That's it for today. Let me now get the list. Where do I put this one? All right. Here it is. I got honestly say the workaholic. It got me. It got me good. It hit me hard in the feels. It hit me very, uh, very hard. That was. I feel bad for Doctor Bridge and I feel bad for SB nine four eight. Arena Arena Marinette. To be honest, that was just nasty. I mean, come on, spiders. That's just, just. Come in, it's just infect your body, grow in one of your artery or in your heart, and then, and then like just want to keep spreading the the seeds with your own sperm, and then once you die, they just go on a massive rampage to make sure that they can still spread the infection around in the most discomfortable way, and even like it, some of them like protrude out your back. 
a payment in kind. I think that's just that's just a like dope. Um, it seems to me very much a a very much a if you're a criminal, you will get mad hallucinations, which will then cause you to probably die of a heart attack or something like that. But if you are if you are actually, it's odd because one of them didn't get any any uh any fear or any hallucination so i assume either that means that he's innocent or that certain traits physical like mental traits are not being hit by this thing mirror maze i mean yeah it's not only not only is it a mirror maze that you can get lost in for a couple of days you also see some crazy shit that kid that's that said he was stuck in a in a windowless like room with a fucking clown. I feel bad for that kid. <laughs> Poor kid, man. I also feel bad for the girl that got shrunken down because of the mirror. So yeah. A form of discussion. That one's just fun. That is that's a fun concept. Just two just two guys having an argument. And if if they agree on each on some argument then the physics or the laws of something will definitely 100% change in our world. Honestly, if you if you manage to make them agree on something, well, they say if you if you try to like argue something that's wrong, then they will immediately just make your uh, chair disappear and you get kicked out of the table argument anyway. So. But I wonder if you could, uh, if you could persuade them to m do something. Um, I don't know, like to change something up that would b benefit the foundation or humans in general. One entertainment land. I think that's just, it's just batshit craziness, isn't it? <laughs> Everything's just going a bit. Everything's like a normal amusement park, but weird. <laughs> so, yeah, blood candy. What can I say about this? It's a fucking, it's a, it's a bubble gum, a gumball that if you eat it, you piss, sweat, cry, <laughs> jizz, snot, spit, blood. <laughs> it's just not, not nothing, nothing. Everything comes comes out blood, and it dries up the same way blood does. Doesn't matter where it comes out from, which if it comes out. Down there, that's uh, the that must be really irritating. Uh, box of Shwapti, I mean, a bunch of Shwapti uh, replicas just trying to kill people so they can have more of themselves. That can be uh, that can be terrifying because, especially because, like, you know, we now know the whole site <laughs> has been taken over by these things because they still do the normal, they they. they the deceased becomes the Shwapti and they still have the memories and know what to do so they just take over they just become smaller versions of themselves and just take over the job but it's just the fact that they looked at everybody else and were like we got, you guys gotta die you guys gotta die we need more of us <laughs> sick of motion yeah a bunch of uh, cars trying to infect each other so they, they can and then they just wanna like you know be somewhere where they don't have to move and infect other cars <laughs> yeah that's probably the reason why they're just constantly saying like, please go to a parking lot please just stay stand still there i don't want i don't want to move but but if there's another car there ooh, now you're talking <laughs> son of of expletive redacted <laughs> this man created an scp and he's like he's just out here like talking to an scp foundation like hey if you want to hire me if you want to have me, <laughs> come on. I, I, I'm, I'm savvy. I'm, I, I'm smart. I'm here over here like you, you, you don't, <laughs> you don't want to be part. The SB Foundation, yes, they work for the government, but they're not really, you know. That, that job is not always fun. <laughs> it's not always sunshine and rainbows, my friend. But yeah, that's the end of today's SB reading. Whew. This Wednesday, we will continue with Dead Island Riptide with Lexi, and Thursday, Friday will be will be Hades once again. Friday will be normal time. Uh, there's no D and D happening on this Friday. Um, yeah, and next week, Kent, we have 
the 950s and 960s to read. You know what that means? We'll get the 969. Nice. <laughs> yeah, we had one SCP here that from an author that I, I have read a couple of them already. I'm pretty sure a lot of the SCPs I read are from the same authors, or, but it's one of the only authors that actually came up to me and was like, hey, um, one of those is actually mine. Here's some more that are mine. And yeah, I think we read all of them that are in the 900s, maybe? No, is it not one? Maybe later on, I will check that on my own time. I'm pretty sure there's one, maybe one more. And yeah. <clears throat> Other than that, I hope you all have a, had a good time watching the stream. I hope to see you all on Wednesday and that you all have a good morning, afternoon, evening. The Afros review. And also, one more time. 